E3 2021 is right around the corner. Throughout June, various publishers and developers will reveal new stuff. We want to hop in beforehand and mention some of the stuff we would really love to see. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 E3 2021 reveals that would freak us out. Now, just a quick little disclaimer. Uh, we're skipping some of the most obvious stuff like Halo, Breath of the Wild 2, stuff that seems like a given. What we're going to talk about are like bigger things that we really have no idea whether we'll see or not but we are for sure hoping starting off with number 10 is seeing bayonetta 3 return obviously the first two bayonetta games are fantastic crazy hack and slash games from platinum games and we know the bayonetta 3 is coming but it's been a long time since we've heard anything about it now they first announced it way back in 2017 and we've only had like two or three updates since the announcement and they've always been like the team is hard at work at bayonetta 3 Keeping in mind that doesn't mean it's vaporware, like a lot of people didn't think that Bayonetta 2 was even ever going to come out, and Nintendo kind of injected some money into Platinum Games in a manner that made that happen. It became a Switch exclusive, and it could very well be that we see more news here. I mean, Kamiya did say it's safe to expect news on the game this year, but it's hard to know whether he means E3 or perhaps later. At number 9, we have another very similar situation, actually. Metroid Prime 4 was teased way back in 2017, actually before Bayonetta 3. Bayonetta 3 was announced in December, while Metroid Prime 4 was announced at E3 2017. So if we don't hear anything, this will actually be the four-year anniversary of knowing that it's in development. It was interesting because Retro Studios took the helm in 2019, and they were two years into development at that point. So I think that Metroid Prime 4 news might be a little more unlikely than Bayonetta 3 news, just based on the nature of how they've gone about doing the development process, that it's switched developers, and most likely was entirely restarted. Meaning, while the game has been in development for four years, probably the current iteration has been in development for two. It's a game that they're gonna want to get right because it has been a long time since Metroid Prime 3 and all three of the original games are pretty well beloved but the last one was released in 2007 so we're talking about a 14 year gap so expectations would be pretty high. At number eight, it'd be pretty insane if we got some Indiana Jones gameplay because that was just announced a few weeks ago. The new Indiana Jones game coming from Bethesda and Machine Games, the Wolfenstein developers, it might be a little bit early to expect any real concrete information, but what we do know about the game is that it is, and this is quoting StarWars.com, Lucasfilm's official news outlet, an original standalone tale set at the height of the career of the famed adventure. Adventure. There are a few nuggets of information out there. There's the fact that Todd Howard is executive producing it, but currently keeping in mind that Bethesda is working on both Starfield and Elder Scrolls 6, and who knows what else Machine Games is working on, it's probably not reasonable to assume we're going to get any information here. However, it would be awesome because the game is probably going to be at least very interesting. Hopefully, since it's Machine Games, it will not be built on the creation engine, which is old and crap. At number seven, the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake could randomly show up. Now, it's probably not going to happen because that's a huge project. I mean, it's a full remake coming from Asper, the developers that have ported a lot of Coder and other games to mobile, to Mac OS, etc. And they've always done a good job, but they've never really fully created a game and what we're gonna be seeing here is a full remake new assets conceivably entirely remade environments probably all new voice acting my question here is how much is the remake going to resemble mass effect because ultimately this was kind of the most firm blueprint for the mass effect model before those games came out it certainly wasn't the first bioware game like that but i would say it most closely resembles mass effect to all their other games and seeing how good the modernization of the mass effect trilogy looks it kind of makes you think i would like to see knights of the old republic looking this good obviously we would love to hear about that but for me it seems unlikely we can hope
At number six, it would be pretty wild to see the sequel to Dragon's Dogma appear. Uh, we've gotten no news about that since a big data leak showed that it was being developed at Capcom and that it probably is being developed as the next Resident Evil engine project. It's a really good engine, but we don't even really have confirmation of that. In terms of official information, there really isn't any. Again, the only reason we actually know it exists is because there's a big Capcom data breach. If you don't remember the original, it came out way back in 2012. Well, so probably there's going to be at least 10 years in between these games in terms of actual release dates, but it could be even longer. I think Dragon's Dogma still kind of holds up today, not necessarily graphically, but it's an action RPG hack and slash that's still a hell of a lot of fun to boot up and spend some time in. At number 5, there could be a new Shadow of Mordor game coming, and we say this because earlier in the year, the original Shadow of Mordor had its servers shut off. Now, keeping in mind that people were still playing the game shows that it's a well-liked series, and the sequel itself was pretty good too. There are not a lot of rumors, there's absolutely nothing official at the moment, but given the first two were good and the second was a pretty darn successful game, even more so than the first, having a game that maybe expands on the skill tree, gives maybe a little bit better of a story, and maybe even updates the combat a bit. Like Assassin's Creed has gone beyond the kind of combat it had, and they've developed a system that still feels like Assassin's Creed, but is also a little more advanced. Obviously, Middle-Earth, Shadow of War, and Mordor both both took inspiration from Assassin's Creed as well as games like Batman Arkham, but they also shouldn't make it unrecognizable. Again, I think Assassin's Creed is a pretty good template here. There is another Batman game coming, but I don't know whether it's reasonable to assume that they'll make big changes there. In any case, it would be nice to hear something about a new Middle Earth game. My fingers are crossed. At number four is a new Splinter Cell game. Now, this one is not reasonable to expect. Splinter Cell has been a dormant series for a very long time now. The last one was Blacklist in 2013, and it did experiment with the formula a little bit, though I think if we saw a new Splinter Cell game now, it would probably be a bigger departure just because of how old school those games really feel now, especially after Metal Gear Solid made its transition into a big open world game that has a pretty expansive feature set. I think you'd probably see something along those lines, except for probably more urban, but we haven't really heard anything from Ubisoft other than they don't have anything specific going on with the game. There's a VR version of it coming, but uh, I'm hesitant to care a whole lot about a VR Splinter Cell. I would like to see a new mainline entry personally, and uh, that's probably not going to happen. It is not high in at least my expectations. Nobody's been talking about it other than that VR game, so hopes are not up. Would be cool though. At number three, this one I think is maybe a little more likely. Some gameplay for Elden Ring, the game that From Software and George R.R. Martin are collaborating on. Now, if they do show some gameplay, I don't really expect that it'll be released this year. From Software is a pretty busy developer. They have other games in development as well. Elden Ring is one of those games where they've been pretty quiet about it. It was announced back in 2019. The interesting part is that it is going to be an open world game and Miyazaki character it as kind of a natural evolution of the Souls series. George R. R. Martin is handling the story, so the game's probably going to take about 26 years to complete. That's an exaggeration. I don't know. Could we hear about it? Sure. But it's interesting that something that originally started as a DLC project for Dark Souls 3, which would mean its development dates back to 2017, we still haven't heard anything about now in 2021. At number two, there's always the possibility we will hear about the next Star Wars game. There are a lot of rumors flying around. For one, Fallen Order was a great game that did really well, so it's reasonable to assume that they're working on a sequel to that. But there's also rumors about a Mandalorian-oriented game, and we also know that there are quite a few different Star Wars projects and works by different publishers, different developers, and honestly, not having it as an exclusive series to EA, I think, is going to result in more games, more diverse games, and probably better games. There's going to be some stuff that EA wouldn't even dream of making, and frankly, I'm excited for that because EA are not the best. Not that I don't like Battlefront 2. I actually think Battlefront 2 is a fantastic game at this point in time, but even that took time. I would personally love to see some studio that is well known for making good open world games making a Mandalorian game, but again, that's just wild speculation. I have no information, so we'll have to see. It's a big maybe.
And at number one, there is always a rumor, an ever-present one, about a Silent Hill revival happening. Now, P.T. way back made such a big impression on the horror world, Resident Evil basically shifted in to be the big AAA series that takes that model on. Obviously, they've incorporated a lot more Resident Evil-y silliness into it. We'll call it silliness. But the PT trailer starring Norman Reedus back in the day was genuinely scary, different, and something that hasn't truly been replicated at this point. Could this be the year? Could this be the E3? Could we finally hear Konami is taking its head out of its ass and decided to make a Silent Hill game. We will see, or maybe we won't. Who knows? What do you think? Leave us a comment, let us know. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications, and as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, at Falcon Hero. We'll see you next time, right here on Game Ranks.